driving for Williams, uh, very, very cool opportunity. Obviously, uh, my dad drove for Williams, so I, I, there's a bit of a connection there. Definitely love that uh, that group of people. It seems like it's a it's a, a, a fun group too. I, after meeting a lot of those guys and girls down there in Austin last year when we got to hang out at the at the race before you were announced as a full time American legend in the Formula One series. Um, <laughs> It seems like a good group. How has that been meshing with those that that group so far, and and how does it feel going forward? Obviously, you said slippery car here, fast down the straights. Let's hope for a good weekend. If that's the plan. I to be honest, it is a really good group, and it wasn't too hard for me to. Well, it wasn't hard at all for me to to mesh with the team because I've been with them since the end of twenty twenty one. It's been honestly the majority of of the group is is pretty much the same since I joined, and um, you know I feel like. Re- you know, we really have a great friendship between everyone within the team, and uh, it makes the weekends, you know, a little bit easier to to get through. Um, and yeah, I feel like the team as a whole, like we're on the right trajectory. It's going in the right direction. Uh, the car's better than it's been in the last five years, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, it's it's looking good. We got to keep it going. But um, as you said, there's but there's been you know positives throughout the first few races. There's been negatives. Um, it's it's not easy to get on top of right away, but I think the fact that you know I've been able to to see that you know the pace is there to to make something happen. I just need to you know clean some things up and uh, start getting on top of it, which made the three week break even longer than it was. But yeah. um, yeah, I think I think the team is you know really really good. They've showed me support throughout the the whole process, and um, yeah, not a better group of people that I could be working with in my first year. Logan, what's been the biggest change in your life, whether in the car, out of the car, since you've become a full-time Formula One driver? <laughs> Definitely get a lot, a lot more, more love. Instagram a lot more Instagram followers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I get I get a lot more love and a lot more hate for what it's worth. But um, <laughs> no, I, I love it all. I love it all. I think the biggest thing for me is has been since since the end of last year. I mean, you know. It, I honestly haven't had more than two weeks to myself. I think it's been constant prep. It's been constant time in the gym. It's been constant media and um, it's draining. So it's just trying to, when you do get those moments to take a break and take a step back, you have to really use them to sort of recharge, let your, let your brain rest. And um, yeah, those days are really, really, really important to be honest. So that's, that's been the biggest thing, just trying to balance things out a little bit better. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot, there's, there's a lot more than just driving F1 as I'm quickly realizing, um, it's more like, uh, I I mean, it's more like a racing driver and a promotional, I guess, from, you know, piece, but, um, no, it's all good. And yeah, just, just trying to figure it out as I go. Well, that promotional piece, it's interesting you say that, right? Because Formula One is a world entity, right? It's a world championship and I saw recently you guys got to go to New York City uh, in in the race suit, um, you know, there with, uh, you know, in the the New York Stock Exchange doing cool stuff. What's that like? Because obviously, you know, the the Formula One boom in America is is massive. You know, it's I was wearing a Daniel Ricardo hoodie just yeah. yesterday at, at a subway in Indianapolis. And the guy asked me, Oh, you think Daniel's going to stay with Aston Martin? Obviously, that's completely not even the right team and nothing is. But people in Carmel, Indiana are talking about Formula One and and that's got to be cool. But when you're in New York City, obviously doing some promotional events, what is that like? Like, because because I obviously think I know what it's like, but as the American guy, like you are the guy, a lot of support there, a lot of questions. What, what was that like? First of all, that was sick. That was yeah. an awesome trip. <laughs> We flew straight from Melbourne to New York and, um, long flight. No, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> L- long flight. That's for sure. But to be honest, it was, uh, it was three days full on media, full on appearances. Um, I have my brother there with me, which was pretty cool. And, um, yeah, we, we were flat out pretty much nine to four each day. And we did a lot of really, really cool things. And, uh, I think a lot of good came out of it. And, uh, I mean, to be there in Times Square. Uh, we did the NASDAQ bell and even, you know, we got a lot of pictures with some of the American fans who were there, um, whether they knew who I was or not. Now they do, <laughs> which is good. Um, hey, if you're wearing a suit, they definitely know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But, um, I mean, it, I hadn't been to New York since I was a little kid, so I didn't really 
remember it uh, from the first time I was there. So to go back, um, it was a uh, it was a really really cool three days, and even just okay, the experience as a whole being, you know, a Formula One driver back in America doing the media was amazing. But just to come back to the city and I don't know, it's like I got to the city and I could just feel this this atmosphere and this. I don't know, ray of positivity. Like I just loved it. I thought I thought everything about New York City was amazing. And uh, to be honest, I can't wait to get back. Logan, do you ever uh, see yourself wanting to run the Indianapolis 500 maybe one day? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I want to do it. That's for sure. Um, I think I think your career is not complete until you've done it, right? <laughs> it's there you like, go. Uh, it's <laughs> it's a. I think it's it's a vital piece of the puzzle. Um, so yeah, one day I'm gonna get around to it. I'm, Have you I'm talked to the other guys sure in the F1 paddock about it? I, I haven't spoken to them directly about it. I just I feel like generally it seems like most are against it. Um, but then, but then again, some are for it as well. So I don't know. It's it's a weird one. It just depends if um, you know they see the risk being worth worth the reward. Uh, I do. I would definitely <laughs> do it. I think. Well, I that's because there, you're American. There's, there's nothing that, like it. You're that's, you're ready to take the risk. I I, I respect that. Joey brings <laughs> up an interesting point though. Like I think there's always this wild debate. There's always these you know crazy things that are said about. You know, and I look. I I did that whole try to race in Europe, right? I I won races over there. Like I know how that goes. I know the journey that you've been on. You know, tried to go to F two. Was it Formula One? I I've done that, so I definitely know the difficulty that it that it took yeah. to get there, and I respect that grind, right? But I I do think obviously a lot of the drivers in IndyCar, right? Like in the series in IndyCar, I think very very talented drivers as well of course yeah. and I, I i love to see the interaction that sometimes a lot of us have you know fernando coming over right to racing the 500 yeah. you know getting to know him was awesome i think I, I i love hearing you say that you'd love to do the indy 500 right because that's it, it is cool and i i think it is obviously one of the largest events in the world i mean in my opinion it is the largest event in the world no big deal agree. um but do you see some of those guys, I think, saying things that are maybe a little bit judgmental of, of the IndyCar paddock? I mean, you obviously know Kyle Kirkwood very well, our most recent winner. Do you see but sometimes man. that where it's like, hey, maybe they maybe they do deserve a little bit more respect than sometimes is given? Um, it's hard for me to speak for the others. I yeah, I don't really I think I I, I do believe you have a difference of opinion across the whole paddock. Um I think some believe that the level is high and I am one of those. I think I truly believe that there's a lot of amazing drivers in DGAR. Um, you know, I have respect for, for all you guys hundred percent. And, um, I, I love the fact that, you know, we're starting to get these opportunities to race, race against each other a little bit more. It'd be nice, honestly, if the races weren't on the same weekend. I know. As, yeah. <laughs> Cause you know, that, that's another that's another thing that makes it a lot more challenging. You can't ask an F one driver to miss an F one race, um, of course, to, to go and do it. So, I think if it, I mean, the way to make it a real option for F one drivers to go and take part in that race is to to make it more accessible, uh, whether that's F one move move a race or whether that's Indy move the race. So, I don't know. I I don't want to speak for the others, but I know how yeah. good Indy car is, and I know how competitive how competitive the field is and um yeah i absolutely respect respect the hell out of it no we we love to hear that for sure because it's it's something that and, and we obviously respect f1 right i think there's there's a few things that you know sometimes we obviously hear and and a lot of us like a lot of us for sure the honesty thing is a lot of us are jealous those, those that didn't get to get to f1 right a lot of us for sure have that jealousy in us because we we would have loved a chance at formula one right that and it's awesome um but i think having that respect of, of all the series is really cool because I think watching you, watching all the other drivers, you know, drivers that I've raced against growing up as well, you know, Carlos, Valtteri, uh, you know, cer certain guys that I've, I've known, you know, known Max yeah. for a long time. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It's great to see that. Uh, and having Fernando come over to the 500, I think it's awesome, right? We got Kyle Larson coming over from NASCAR next year yeah. to do the 500. Yeah, You're yeah. right. Like if, if Monaco somehow is the weekend before or, or the weekend after, 
that that would open up. You're never going to move the Indy 500 from Memorial Day weekend, but it's it's going to be something that yeah. hopefully there is more opportunities in the future. That that's 100 percent the problem because it's hard. I mean, like you said, the Indy 500 is not going to get moved. Monaco is hard to move because it's a street yeah. race, so it's already it's booked out for you know whatever. That that's the weekend. Um, it just feels like they do these things on purpose. It was like I know <laughs> it was like the same in karting back in the day, like you had the Super Nationals the same weekend as the World Championships in Europe. Yes, like this that's is actually definitely, a great point. I remember that. Like, why why do they do this so that you can't like come together and and you know do this unbelievable race? And um, I don't know. I don't know. I it's a, it's a tough one, isn't it? It's yeah, it is tough. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, we're not going to make you answer like why we have to figure this out right now, but it is cool that you want to do it. <laughs> no, that, that's for sure. I will get around to it at some point. 